friends, welcome or welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Mel and this is my YouTube channel where I am documenting my health journey with a specific focus on weight loss in the hopes that it will help other people on similar journeys. So today's video is about how to reset on a health or weight loss journey when you've had a little wobble. Maybe stress levels are high in your life at the moment. Maybe you're feeling flat and sad. Maybe you've bitten off more than you can chew. Maybe you're injured or sick or just tired. Or maybe you've simply lost interest. Whatever the reason, we all have a wobble every now and then and it's completely fine. It's completely normal. The important thing is we know how to move on from it so we can continue on with the journey. Now I've had many, many wobbles before. Oh my God. So I'm very well versed on this topic. So today I'm gonna to share some ways that I have stopped, reset and moved on with my health and weight loss journey in the past. Important to note, of the things I'm gonna share with you today, I don't do every single one of those things every single time I need to reset, because there's quite a lot. The purpose of this video is to share all my knowledge and all my tips and tricks so that you can make or fill your own toolbox and then you just take bits and pieces as and when needed. So let's get started. The first thing I would recommend is, surprise, surprise, get reacquainted with your why. And I know I bang on about this, in all my videos slash the last two videos, which I will link in the description below because they're definitely worth watching. But the reason I bang on about it so much is because it's so important. You need to make sure you're feeling engaged with the reason you started this journey in the first place. And if that's not working, if you can't re-engage with it, if it doesn't mean what it used to mean, maybe you need to rethink your why. I always think examples are helpful when explaining things like this. So for me, a big part of my why is so that I can be fit and healthy and able to travel more and do more when I travel and go on adventures and fully enjoy myself and be confident in my body's abilities. And we went on a hike the other weekend and whilst we finished the hike that we set out to do, there was a little extra over continuation and that continuation led to a really cool waterfall and I couldn't do it. I didn't have the fitness and the strength to do the last bit to get us to the waterfall. So Steve went and did it himself, which was awesome, but I missed out and that was really frustrating for me and I felt really disappointed. But at the same time, it gave me a really good nudge in the direction of my why and it reminded me why I'm doing this. And yes, it sucks that I can't continue on to the waterfall on this beautiful hike, but it's not forever. I'm actively doing something about it now to make sure that that doesn't continue to happen. Another big part of my why is preventing disease and injury. So when I'm feeling disconnected, I like to remember all the amazing health benefits I'm gonna get from losing weight. From the weight I've already lost, but also the weight I'm gonna continue to lose. And every little bit of progress, every little bit is a step away from illness and injury. Weight loss or any health journey requires change and change is hard, but it is even harder without a good reason. So ask yourself, why are you doing this? What is so important that made you wanna change your life in the first place? And more importantly, how can you reconnect with it? For me personally, I just like going down rabbit holes on YouTube and watching videos that inspire me and motivate me. And then I like to do some work, usually in a journal, writing stuff down, or I'll go for a walk and put in some music and just remind myself about why I'm doing this and what's important to me. Any way to kind of help that message sink in and make me feel re-engaged and really excited to get back on track. Whatever works for you, go for it. Okay, so once you remember why you're on this journey to begin with and you're feeling reconnected to that, it's time to restock so you feel prepared and organized to continue on with the journey. The first part of this would be going grocery shopping and doing any meal prep you need to do, which I talk about in more detail in my last video, which will be linked in the description below and it's also up here or here, not sure which side it's gonna pop up on. So check that out because I talk a little bit more about that. In terms of exercise and movement, if you exercise with a friend, lock in some times. If you go to the gym, book in some classes. Remember though, don't go too crazy, ease back in. This is all about getting your habits back to where they were and doing it sustainably. Also, I know this is oddly specific, but make sure you've got clean exercise gear for the week ahead. Because if you're waking up early in the morning, keen to get back on track, but it has been a while and you're not feeling quite yourself and you go to your cupboard 
and the only clothes you have are those weird shorts that always ride up when you exercise and make you feel super uncomfortable, that could be enough to knock you right back into bed. Personally, for me, something I find to be a barrier is being too busy. So organizing my week in accordance to what I need is something that I find super helpful when I need to get back on track. I can get really overwhelmed and exhausted if I've got too much on and that is enough to totally derail me. And that is a boundary that I'm learning a lot about and I'm trying to stick to. So if that's something you can relate to and having a really packed social calendar on top of work or study or school commitments or parenting commitments or whatever it is, if it all just gets a little bit too much for you, don't be afraid to rejig your week and organize it in a way that suits you. Remember that when you're feeling off track, you're probably feeling frustrated and defeated and annoyed and just over it all. So something not going to plan can be enough to just derail you in your efforts to reset. And it won't always be like this. You're not always gonna feel like this. You're not always gonna have to micromanage your own calendar because you've got too much on. It's just while you're trying to reset. It won't take that long. Just be extra kind to yourself, extra patient and do whatever you need to do to make it as easy as possible for yourself to get back on track. So do your washing, restock your fridge, book in your gym classes, and if necessary, rejig your week. Do what you need to do. Point number three is to clean your space. There's nothing worse when you're trying to get your body and mind back on track than having surroundings looking like a hot mess. If you wanna reset and get back to trying to become the version of you that you wanna be, you need to make sure you've got the right environment in which to do that. Personally, I like to start by doing the washing. Getting rid of all the dirty piles of laundry is so satisfying, but it also means I have all my exercise gear ready for the week. I also weirdly love hanging out the washing and I find it really relaxing, especially when it's nice and sunny outside. Decluttering and putting everything back in its home is something I find really helpful. It's cathartic, it declutters my mind, and it instantly makes the space look cleaner. Then I like to properly clean the apartment. And if I have time, I do a deep clean. I give my plants some love and attention, which keeps them alive, but I also find that when I'm doing something slowly and mindfully, and it's such a nice nurturing activity, I feel calmer and clearer in my mind. And I change the sheets. This is such a shit job, but it makes a difference and I absolutely have a better sleep. The final point is get back to you. Show yourself some love and respect and remind yourself that Yes, you are absolutely worth the time and energy that this health journey is going to take. This might look like journaling or getting a massage or doing a face mask, going on a long walk, washing your hair, exfoliating, moisturizing, meditating, or going to a cafe by yourself and getting a coffee and just watching the world go by. Maybe it's getting your nails done. Maybe it's getting your hair done. Maybe it's booking in all those appointments that you've been putting off. Maybe it's a wardrobe clean out. Maybe it's taking the time to cook yourself a delicious meal that you wouldn't normally make. Light some candles, go for a drive, take yourself out on a little adventure. Honestly, do whatever makes you feel good. You deserve the time and energy it takes to feel good and you are worth improving your health and your life for. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's time consuming, but it is time to get back on track because you bloody well deserve the best healthiest version of you. I really hope these tips help reset whatever kind of health or weight loss journey that you're on. Remember, you can use as many or as little of these tips and tricks as you like and keep trying until something sticks. And if anyone watching this video has their own ways of resetting on a health or weight loss journey, please put them in the comments below so everyone can benefit. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a fabulous, fabulous two weeks and I will see you in a fortnight. Oh my God, I almost forgot my hot tip. How embarrassing. So my hot tip for this week is something that I have benef benefited, benefited from recently, which is finding something that I really look forward to and making time for it and prioritizing it. So for me at the moment, it is a YouTube channel called Oki on Film. I absolutely love it. I love their content. They are an Australian couple traveling around Australia in their van with their gorgeous dog and their videos are so calming and beautiful and I find that it really relaxes me and resets me. So I have made a decision that not every Monday because they don't have videos coming out as often as that, but whenever they have a video that's out, I make sure I watch it on a Monday morning after I've done my walk. I have a coffee in my hand. I do not feel pressured to log on and start work because I work from home on Mondays. 
I'd give myself that time to watch that video. And yes, I could be doing a hundred other things, but I'm not. I'm giving myself permission to relax and enjoy something and not feel any guilt. I look forward to it and I enjoy it in the moment. And it is such a small thing, especially because these videos are not that long, but the act of telling myself that it is okay to do something for me, purely for me, and not feel like I have to always be doing something else, something constantly productive, the act of telling myself that has made a big difference. And that's a kind of self-love gesture that I'm not as familiar with, but I like it and I highly, highly recommend you try. And obviously for most people, it's not going to be sitting with a coffee watching a YouTube video. I get that. It's the whole principle. It's the premise of giving yourself permission to do something for you and only you that you love and enjoy purely because it makes you feel good. Give it a go.